Hey everybody, back again. Uh, happy Friday to you. This is going to be Snarf. Um, we are going to be doing a uh, a scary Snarf, for lack of a better term. Uh, that's what I'm going to be calling him, and uh, that's what we're going to go with. So uh, give me just a second here. I'm going to be sharing this over on the page so that everyone can join in and... Uh, catch up on this so uh, bear with me just a second gonna be posting and live now all right there we go okay cool now hey Matt Jerome thanks for stopping by man um this guy is going to be very simple because uh, this character is just very open and clean. And uh, he reminds me, uh, it's a funny thing, he reminds me of my buddy Rusty. Um, Rusty Gilligan, if you guys don't know who he is, he has been a uh, professional comic book uh, creator since uh, 1978, believe it or not. And... Uh, the guy is just phenomenal. He, he's been a longtime friend of mine, good Lord, for nearly 20 years. And, um, yeah, long time. And uh, this guy, Snarf, reminds me of him because of the, the beard and stuff. He, he looks like Rusty in the face. It cracks me up. So he'll kill me for saying so. But, um, yeah, that's my buddy. Um, <clears throat> I'm knocking this guy out real quick because, like I said, it, it's going to be uh, very simple and very clean, and I really enjoy this character because of the fact that uh, he's just, excuse me just a second. Okay. I wanted to make sure where my uh, my chimes were coming from. I wanted to make sure everybody could hear me okay. Um, now, this guy is just very simple, and um, I, I love the character Snarf. He is phenomenal. Um, I know I say that a lot, but this particular character had a cool point for me. Um, <laughs> Matt, Matt just mentioned in my comments for future reference for this video, wherever I put it later. Um, he just said that Snarf was a much better character in the uh, 2011 remake because he didn't talk. Um, but, uh, yeah, he, he was just another... another um, alien species to come along um you know it's just one of those things he had to talk because that's what they did with cartoons back then and they had animals talking all the time but um he was more of an alien and um as part of the thundercat crew he was he was their servant and he was supposed to be uh lionos protector and servant and um basically his nanny so uh that made that awkward but um yeah this character's just awesome because he was the comic relief in the series and in the comic books later that came from it uh that spun off from it and um i, I really dig the character he reminds me kind of um an old school uh garfield or heathcliff type of um animated character you know um not necessarily something like Hanna-Barbera, you know, not that old school, but um, he's definitely there when it counts, and um, I, I just really dig the guy. So uh, that he's one of the characters that I really like the most out of the series because of the fact of the dynamic um, characteristics and personality that he had. So uh, this is a more of an animated type of character look a cartoony type of character so I uh, have a little bit of a different take on him but it still it still looks pretty close I, I like it it's gonna work and he had no eyebrows though so I'm not gonna put any eyebrows in um, this was done by a Japanese company so he looks you know if he looks kind of like a chibi or you know a Pokemon or something like that it's because of the fact that it was originated um, in a Japanese animated studio, so that's where all the Thundercats were done. 
uh, most of filmation, uh, filmation, most of their stuff was done overseas. Um, in fact, all of it was, as far as I know. And they used a lot of catch footage and stuff like that, so everything looked the same. You know, it would be like He-Man running. You would see that same single shot of uh, Prince Adam taking off running and whatnot whenever he would go to change into, into He-Man. And um, it would just be the same shot over and over. Or that the one they made into the, me the most memed, version is the one where they do the overhead shot where he um, takes his fighting stance or he takes his scared stance and he does that whole knees bent kind of boxer crouch kind of thing and then it goes off into something else which is hilarious um, because that just doesn't go away uh, those kind of, <laughs> those kind of shots just get reused and reused it's not just the um, Grayskull transformation or the um, the Thundercats call sequence, which they only had two of those. They redid another one in season four, I think it was. Uh, they redid the first one and they redid it where he was on a cliff and um, put in the blue sky behind him. But it's the same exact animation cells over that. Um, so you still get the same sequence, but... Uh, it's just in a different area. Instead of it going black from behind like the intro, it goes uh, with clouds in the sky and stuff like that. And then everything turns red, of course. And uh, you have lion -O running amok, uh, calling the Thundercats, as it were, for uh, everybody to come running. But, um, you know, there's a lot of this stuff that gets reused like that. And animation's notorious for that. And I, I can't say that I blame them because of budget cost. You know, this stuff is really expensive to make. Um, you know, they said something along the lines uh, in the documentary, the, the documentary, if you saw it, they said something along the lines of it cost them $300,000 to make all of the sequences all together. And then they had to reuse um, many of the sequences over and over. And... That's why some of the dialogue doesn't match up. When you get into that, if you really pay close attention, some of it in a couple of places goes into this um, almost Godzilla type of knockoff situation. So you get in there and you look at it and some of the mouths and stuff don't match up to the words. And um, you'll see sequences sped up or slowed down to cut cost because they don't want to do that, you know. Um, there's an infamous uh, cell that I just saw when I was doing the research for this uh, just to get an idea of what Snarf looked like and refresh, you know, what I wanted to do with it. Um, it was funny because there was this um, shot where they reused Snarf on the ground and he had his paw in a particular part of Lionel's anatomy as Lionel was lying there. And it, Lionel was supposed to be knocked out in the cave or hurt or whatever and um, you see Snarf just sitting there with his, you know, his hand on his business. And um, it looked a little awkward, you know. I mean, to a 10-year-old, you really don't care. But now that I'm older, it's like you, you kind of look for that stuff as a funny kind of thing. And it's kind of like the outtakes for stuff, you know. You, you look for stuff like that. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm not going to go into any more of that because of the young people that, that I have on <laughs> all my panelists, their moms and dads will reject really quickly. <laughs> so we're not going to go there any further. But, um, yeah, I just find it highly amusing that uh, that kind of stuff goes on. Um, and I'm going to add in eyebrows even though I don't want to. Um, I'm going to add them in anyway because of the fact that I just want it to pop a little more. So, but... Uh, yeah, this guy is very cool and very simple. And um, like I said, because of the Japanese style source animation, it makes it really easy to draw him. Uh, as long as you have an open style that matches up and gets, you know, doesn't go too crazy with the cartoony look, because uh, a lot of people can't draw cartoony style stuff like this. Um, my style goes for it because I have a more animated style, but 
you know, a lot of people can't get this pulled off um, without it really jacking up their artwork or making him look really monstrous, which we don't want to do either. But um, anyway, since there's so little detail in this, I'm going to flesh this out quite a bit with some uh, classic animation style um, elevations. And what that means is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to drop the undershadows on things like this to make it pop off. It's going to make it look even more so in the animated look, but uh, it'll raise it up quite a bit to where we will be able to see it and make it pop off. So I'm going to pull that out like that, go on the underside of this hair here, make it stick up a little more. And see, it's little tricks like that with thick and thin lines that you can really pull this stuff together. Um, I'm going to darken up his lip here and thicken it up just a little bit so he has more depth away from his teeth. And like this under lip here. But, uh, yeah, it cracks me up with this stuff because, you know, everybody's like, well, you got to be this way or that way or whatever, you know, and take it too seriously and um, take the fun right out of it. So don't do that. Um, just do your thing, you know. And if your style looks a little weird with it, then you know not to draw stuff like that. <laughs> but for the most part, you should be able to draw anything you want. And I'm highly supportive of that. So I say go for it. Now on this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a drop shadow here to pop that beard right off his chest. And most people don't do this. They go in and put a big black line right up underneath the edge of it. Don't do that. Break your points off and show them from a different angle so that you can see the light hitting uh, from a different way. Because if you do, it'll make that 3D effect and make it pop right off. And so many people miss that and fail to do it. And... Um, now, see, on the light side, you want to put that thin line right close to it like that as an opposing light. But for the most part right here, you want to oppose it and make it look like the light's coming down and going boom right on top of it. Now, see, to, to make that counter and look right, what I'll do is I'll go in here on this side of Snarf's nose and just add that kind of light right there. And it'll make it pop right up. So that's a little trick to think about and pay attention to when you're doing this kind of thing and pop it off just a little more. Okay. Now with the major light coming from that angle, I'm going to put it over here and wrap up the side of this eye so that we can get that going on. And I'm going to harden those up just a little bit. And with the ears tipping back the way they are, the way I would do this is I would put the heavy line on this side of the ear here like that and even go ahead as far as to shave a, a part of it off and shade that down and then go in on this side and shade that off as well like this to make that light look like it's going to come down but then what you do is you go in and do a little bit of feathering to make it look like his ears in shadow and if you want to make it pop off just a little bit put the indentation there and what you want to do is come in here to this fold and put it in there like that. And make it pop up a little bit. <clears throat> Not too much, just a little. Don't want to make it go crazy, you know, make it look super thick or anything weird like that. But um, that's the way to do it. So come in here, pop in the knuckles. And since the light's from that upper source coming down this way, we have that going across here like that. And dropping down there like that. I'm going to pop those knuckles right up. And then we'll put in a little bit of a light groove right there on this side of each finger. 
and that'll make that pop off. Now, with the fur on the back of the hand being in the shadow like that, we can make that pop out too this way. So that helps a lot. And then we have this little ridge here because he's got kind of a snake belly thing going on. So we want to put out that ridge there and that'll help a lot. Now on this side, we put this in the hand here like this, shadow this side, shadow that side, that side. That way we have that done. And because of the two tones of fur and there being an elevation to it, I'm going to put kind of a thick back on it like that. Because it does raise off. It gives a little more of a three-dimensional effect. Now, if I really wanted to jazz it up, I could go in and cut stuff that doesn't exist like this. Um, you know, shade the hair a little bit. And kind of make it look even more so. This is one of my favorite things to do is go in and cut stuff like this to make it pop up. And it gives it a little more of an edge that it originally, uh, originally didn't have. So you can make that work for it. And then like on this side, you can go in and put in these little swish marks like this. And they don't have to be super deep or detailed or whatever. You can just cut them in kind of smooth, you know. Don't uh, go over hacking your artwork. So that's a big deal. Don't, don't hack your artwork. Same thing here. This being the primary light side opposing the dark so you want to put that on the dark side like that you can add in a couple of things like this make it jump up a little bit and if you wanted to go even further you could put in like a little couple of ash marks here to show his mustache you know off of his lip kind of thing and make it raise up even more. Put in this little divot right here. Put in that mark. And if you want to take it a little further, you could put actual eyelids around his eyes, which he doesn't have, but it'll make them pop way off. So. We can even go as far as to add eyelids to him if we wanted to. But like I said, I don't want to overwork this too much. I just want to add a little detail here and there. So I'm going to put a little crest right here. Make it pop up a little bit. Like that. So... And down in here, if you wanted to make it look even more um, like his face is in there, you can make this mark right here. But you have to be careful with this because if you draw an actual chin, it'll make it look weird. So um, just put a little couple of hair marks or slashes like that. And then you can bring it out that way and make it in the facial features, um, but hair shaped. And it'll bring it out. So, because he's got hair everywhere, you just want to kind of make the, the hair manipulate into the facial features you want. So, with that said, though, I think we've got Snarf. I want to put a couple of things on him here, because Snarf had little fingernails and that kind of thing, and we'll be able to see just a little tiny bit of that right there. And he always had these little zigzags right here, almost a Kirby style thing. Um, I don't know if Jack had any influence in that or not. I think that was all Bill and uh, Bob and those guys that uh, did all of that stuff. Because that team was pretty tight with that, with that show. 
they didn't let many people from the outside in. Um, oh, yeah, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to put in that finger shadow right there. And just to let you guys know, I did put in the cape on Mumra from earlier. Uh, when I finished it out, I did uh, make that happen. So, yeah, I noticed when I signed off that I didn't have that um, that finished cape in, in there. And I have it over here to the side. I'll show you real quick. I put in that backdrop for the, the cape for him right here, right here, over here on the sides where the shredding was. That kind of thing. I added that cape a little bit. And uh, as you can see, I started inking it just a touch. So um, I'll have that up this evening. I am already inking on it uh, to post all of the current stuff. So now here's a little cool trick, too. When you're drawing one-dimensional teeth like this, because I draw teeth like this all the time. Um, I don't actually draw the individual teeth. If you want to make it look cool and you want to add a little bit of a ridge to it, just put this fine line little detail right here across the bottom and it'll make it pop right out. And if you want to add some separation to them, just do that right there. And there you go. Show that little divot, but don't necessarily draw out each individual tooth because it'll make it look strange. Um, now here on the bottom of this, I'm going to put in these little marks here to uh, pop this up a little bit because I don't want it to look so... Um, so open with Snarf's um, fur and contrast to his shadowed face. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop these in right here. And uh, put in these tiny little marks here for the ridges. And I'm going to shadow the top side of that to make it. I'm not going to black out the whole thing, but I'm going to shadow the top side of that so it'll look like the light's coming down like it is in the, in the image so it'll pop off and then what we'll do is we'll come in here and do the same thing we did before um, I'll put in a couple of little ridges here it shows the refinement on the hair without losing the detail of the hair itself so I don't want him to start looking funky like he's, you know, kind of Chewbacca or something um, with individual hairs running everywhere because that's not that's not the look we want him to have because he won't look right in that regard. Now, I'm not going to shade a lot of this, um, but this particular side of it has to be done because I don't want it to look funky with the uh, the underside of the wrist because... This side is blocked by the light, if nothing else, by the hand, uh, uh, I'm sorry, by the forearm, and by the light source being on the other side of the arm. So I just want to add that on real quick, kind of make that stand out a little bit. But I think we've about got this one, and we're going to call it a day. <clears throat> Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me, and uh, I hope you dig it. So we'll talk at you soon. Uh, see you guys tomorrow for, um, do you want to know? <laughs> uh, tomorrow we will have, let's see. <clears throat> I believe I'm going to do Linkso tomorrow. Um, that will be tomorrow. So, yeah, we will have him uh, posted, and I think it will be cool. Let me see here. Yeah, we can do uh, Linkso tomorrow, and we'll knock out one of the, the second generation of Thundercats uh, from Series 3 through 5, I think it was. So you guys will have that to look forward to. But anyway, <clears throat> now I am going to get back to – I've got a couple of minutes here. There's Snarf. I'm going to get back to um, <clears throat> inking on this thing, and – spend a minute or two doing that and uh i'm gonna call it a day so i'll talk to you guys tomorrow take care